we got a call, I don't know, 3 or 4 in the morning from the police calling Dale, wanting him to come down to the store. There was a, a slight problem, or a little problem, whatever. So he gets up and goes down, which, you know, is no big deal because we've been robbed before, we've been broken into and everything. So anyhow, it was, we got up Sunday morning, he still wasn't home. This was what, about 8 o'clock, and uh, so I was getting up and I was getting the kids ready for Sunday school. I was up, and I forget which one. I think it was Jackie come running and said, Mom, she said, somebody's dead at our store. And oh my God, you know, I just, I said, you know what? She had had the radio on. And we couldn't make heads and tails to it. I mean, I, we really couldn't. I was just shaking. So I called the store and nobody answered. Didn't know what was going on. So needless to say, we didn't go to church. Yeah. And uh, we listened to what we could. And then, of course, Dale came, I don't know what time he got home, you know? I don't remember either. It must have been noon. And he was just absolutely devastated. So you didn't know until he got home? Well, I knew I knew there had been a murder, yeah. Yeah. But I didn't know who or any of the people, and he couldn't even talk about it. Well, anyhow, as it all unfolded, John and Sue, we took turns closing the store at night. Dale and I went on a Friday night. John and Sue went on a Saturday night. Katie and Eddie went on Sunday night. There's always two of us to close. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and usually there's other people there and we leave it together. It just so happens it was John and Sue's turn. And Sue had to pick Sue had to go up there that night to get John. He lost his license because he'd been speeding again or something, and mm -hmm. he lost his license. And she left the babies with her sister, fortunately. We don't know what happened other than they think he was waiting in the store. There was two people, uh, two, another guy was there with John when they were closing. He left just shortly before John and Sue did. He went on to the bank or something. And, uh, don't know what happened. Um, of course, it was a holdup. He wanted the money, which I know John gave him. I know John gave him the money. I mean, that, that's no question of that. And the store had been around a he, lot of times before that happened. Yeah, yeah. It so was, you know, you know, a routine thing. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it wasn't like a once in a surprise no. thing. No. How many no. times? At that particular store, a robbery, I can't tell you. I don't think ever a robbery, but burglary, yes. We were robbed at 21st in Arkansas. We were robbed out on um, 37th Street. Uh, I can't tell you. But anyhow, um, whatever happened that night, evidently uh, the police think that this guy made an advance to Sue. She was awfully cute. She was a cute little girl and made John mad because there was evidence of a struggle. And he was shot in the meat department and Sue was in the walk-in cooler. She was in a fetal position on the floor, her hands over her head, and she was shot in the back of the head. And of course they got him almost immediately they knew who it was. Oh, another thing, that he got almost four thousand dollars. But there was I think three or four thousand dollars left right on top of the safe in a white bag. Hmm. So, you know, he he, he was dumber than dumb. Was on drugs? <laughs> I, I don't know. I don't know. Okay. But I do know he was a horrible looking guy because about six months before, he was in that high-speed chase, mm -hmm. and I'll never forget this officer. Uh, well, anyhow, we uh, no, uh, we went down to the. Okay, how it was, they caught him, and they wanted. It was on television that night, and and uh, or that afternoon, evening, whenever, and they wanted Dale to come down to a lineup. When we got down there, he has said, the police said, has anybody seen the man on television? And I said, yes, I did. So they wouldn't let me go in. Mm -hmm. But Dale hadn't seen it. So he went in, and I, I'm not sure. Eddie, Glenn, two, three of them went in there to uh, see if they could identify him. And 
I don't know. Might they have? I mean, could some of the, is it someone they'd seen before, or that's what they want to know? Okay. And I, I don't know. I can't, I can't remember that. I don't think so. I don't think so. He been he he hadn't lived here very long. He was on, he he was living in California. He was on parole out there. They let him come back to Kansas because his father was a minister. Mm -hmm. I mean, what better father could you have than a minister? <laughs> and then about six <laughs> weeks before he killed John Masood, he was in a high-speed chase, and I don't know what he did, but he was going good, what, 100 miles an hour? It's in the paper there. Um, and he crashed his car, and he wound up in a ditch in about, I don't know, three or four inches of water, face what down. Was from California for? I don't remember. I don't think I even knew, Daryl. Mm -hmm. But uh, he was on parole. They let him come here. Well, then he was on parole when he killed from the high-speed chase. Mm -hmm. He killed John and Sue. Mm -hmm. Wasn't there another time he was on parole, and or just later that he was on parole and did something? Oh well, he was on parole twice At this time. in the nineties when yeah, they let him out. This is another time. This would be another yes. parole. Yes, he had been happened. in prison what, Robbie, twenty-five years. Like that, yeah. And the church people mm -hmm. went together, mm -hmm. wanted him out. They. Thought he'd been in prison long enough, you know, 25 years is a long time, but he was given two life sentences without the possibility of parole. I'll never forget it. That's what he was given because we and didn't have the death penalty. And that. guess what? 15 years later, he's up for parole. Well, we mm -hmm. fought it tooth and nail. Then something happened in Topeka in the parole board, and they they lost records. They moved him around. They didn't know who to you know, they let him out. Mm -hmm. So and getting back to the, the congregation, mm -hmm. they got together. I don't know how many of them went down there in behalf of his father. Mm -hmm. They got him out. He was out eight months, I think, approximately eight months. He was sent back to prison. Mm -hmm. I don't, I'm not sure what he did. I, I heard it was burglary, but I'm, I don't take that. They let him out again. I think it was 95. He was out five weeks. <laughs> They put him up. Then I was notified in 99 that he was up for parole, and if he got out on parole for killing John and Sue, he would still have to serve time for breaking his parole in 95. I didn't know what they were talking about because I didn't know he was out. I know in the 90s, starting in around 91, because it was 87 the last time we went down there, I started calling down to the DA's office to see what the status was. And each time they said, oh, yeah, he's still here. He's in prison, you know, no problem. I said, well, do you know what's happened? And I distinctly remember asking, have they changed the laws that I don't know about that they're keeping him in, you know, past the three years? Mm -hmm. And uh, she, she didn't know about it. And I said, well, I said, they, something must have happened for him not to be up for parole. Well, of course, she didn't know anything. All she knew is he was still in prison. I called three times in the 90s. Three separate times, I just happened to not call when he was out. And each time they said, oh yeah, he's here, he's here, he's there. So every time he's gotten out within, what, six months, eight months, he's back? Yeah, first time. Second time was five weeks, mm -hmm. five to six weeks. Yeah. Okay. And this is the so definition. then in 1999, we went, I, I hit the royal ceiling. I mm -hmm. mean, I talked to everybody in Topeka. I demanded they let me know, and they told me they didn't have to. Well, of course, Carl Stovall got this uh, victim's advocate thing going. Right. And um, now I understand they have to notify you. It's the law. I mean, they said, you know, this you just can't do this. Right. Um, what happened to the kids? The children, there were three sets of, of relatives, three couples in John's family that wanted to adopt them. This would be a straight out adoption. They were like what, one and zero, one yeah. and two? Yeah. yeah, one, approximately one and two. John had a cousin, he lived in western Kansas. He was married, they had an eight year old girl, they lived on a farm. And the judge thought this was ideal because it was quite a big deal, you know, to get the children out of, of Wichita. Their names would be changed. They were too little to know anything that went on, and they could presumably have a you know, normal life. life. Yeah. Do they know now? Nobody knows now. Nobody knows? I don't know. Okay. No, and, and I never pushed it, Harold, because yeah. um, uh, the robbery and the killing was connected to our name. Mm -hmm. 
and I can understand that. Yeah. You know, I really can. So we just get turned over the money to them, to the whoever they, uh huh. And the children were taken out there and raised. I know the parole board asked me last time I was up there if I knew where the children, if I knew what their names were and where they were, and I said no. I don't. I have no way of knowing. So then, when he got out on parole, he got out. He served his time for the murders then. And he yeah, got out on yeah. Parole, and for he the broke murders. The parole. Yeah. So now, what we're going to do now is the murders have been. He's done his time. The question is... No, he hasn't done his time. Well, if he got paroled for the murders... Yeah, but he broke the parole, so he's back to scare, scare, uh, st uh, st uh, square one. Oh, it, it moves him back to having to serve time, not just for breaking parole, Yeah. but the rest of the sentence. Well, there is no, is no rest of the sentence, only three years at a time. I mean. See, that's what I'm getting at, is... Has he served his time according to the rule of law, society, all this stuff? Has he served not his time? Not according to my law. No, but that's not that's not <laughs> it. You see where I'm going with yes, this? Yes, I do. Yes, yeah. I do. Has he served his time for the murders? No. No. He was out on parole for the murders. Right. In other words, he got out on parole, I think, in 93, okay? After serving how many years? About 20, 25. Of a double life. Of a double sentence. life sentence, okay. yes. No possibility, no, per, no possibility of parole. He's at 25 years. Mm -hmm. Okay, he's on parole mm -hmm. for killing them. Mm -hmm. He breaks the parole, mm -hmm. so he's back to square one. So he has to go back, according to law, and serve out the rest of the sentence because he broke parole. He doesn't go back to prison just for breaking parole. Oh, no. He oh, goes no. back for the right. murders. Right, for breaking, okay. yeah, parole for the murders, okay. yes. Okay. Yes. That's all I wanted to know. Yeah. Because if he's done his time, but there's society, no, there's no such thing. There's no such thing as him doing his time. Yeah. Not because this is why we're here. This is no, why I we're fighting. I know. This. I know. I'm trying to keep the definition: two life sentences without the possibility of parole, that's, a pure definition. That's yeah. exactly. And I want to know if that's still the definition. Is that is still for just parole violation? No. Or is no. Okay, no. Good. No. Good. No. Because I can see someone looks saying, well, like he's done his time, so he's rehabilitated, that's it. You know, like, well, if we didn't, like if we didn't, didn't okay, let me tell you. Oh, well, I know, I know. Sure. If we didn't go down there, mm -hmm. and some of the church people wanted him out, mm -hmm. and none of us, this is what happened the last time. None mm -hmm. of us showed up, I didn't know anything about it. Mm -hmm. And the church people showed up, and they, it weighed in their favor. And I talk, I don't know who I talked to at the parole board, but I asked her, I said, how, how much weight does it? You know, people going to the parole board and objecting to him getting out carry. And she said it carries a lot of weight. She says it makes a lot of difference. So it evidently did for the church people to get him out. Mm -hmm. Then they, you know, I don't know about any of these good church people, but mm -hmm. I wouldn't want him out. I wouldn't sleep at night. I wouldn't want him next door. I wouldn't want him there. No. I, oh, no way. I don't care what kind of religion you have. No. I mean, <laughs> no. I you, you don't want somebody out there. Actually, better than philosophy. His his mm -hmm. stronger. His relationship between him and God is one thing, but we have a uh, responsibility to society. Mm -hmm. And look how many people that man devastated oh, for no yeah. reason. Oh yeah. All he had to do was take that damn money and walk out. Mm -hmm. That's all he had to do. Yeah. It would have caught him eventually. He was out gambling it. I mean, that's how they caught him. He had all this money thrown around gambling. Um, but just robbing a store, I don't mm -hmm. know what the sentence would have been, but he would have, yeah. you know, he would have gotten out and killed somebody else. I do believe it. But, uh, oh, yeah. I believe that, too. I don't want him out. Yeah. I do not want him out. I want him to die in prison. Mm -hmm. Now, call that... Vicious vendetta, whatever. I don't care. No, it's don't obviously what, so. what our society has deemed reasonable punishment for his crimes. So yeah. what, you're not out of line. You're no, by uh, you know, well, human well, life is so thing. valuable that if somebody's going to take a human life, then they need to be willing to pay for it. Mm -hmm. In that sense, it may not be the death penalty, but it's mm -hmm. yeah. at least it's protecting the rest of us. Rest of all I'm going to ask the parole board is to stand by the original sentence. Right. Yeah, that's, that's all. See, that's what I was asking. Right. Yeah. Is, is it, that still valid? Oh, because, yes, it oh, is. Oh, yes, it is. It's very valid. Chad, the same question, too. Yeah. It's very valid, yes. Okay, good. The parole, all he would, it, 
hypothetically, they say if if he gets out, see, on mm -hmm. with, let's say he gets out this time for the murder of John and Sue, mm -hmm. he still got to serve. What is it? Uh, I've got the letter there. Um, Twenty some months for breaking his parole. It's mm -hmm. a separate thing. Yeah. So yeah, he's back to square one. Okay. Good. Except he's going to have more time because he broke his parole. Yeah. If he gets out. Yeah. <sighs> think we got it? I think we got it. All right. Got okay. any more questions? I will put that on the CD. Okay. Hmm. Yeah, I know. I just.